Okay, I'm apparently hearing a lot of buzz about this episode of Yojo Senki. Now, you're probably wondering if you haven't heard, like, what are you talking about, Chibi? Well, apparently, from what I've been told on Twitter, is that this episode straight away from the light novel source, the source material of this series. Now, at this time, from what I have heard from light novel readers, is that it's not necessarily bad. It could be a good or a bad thing. However, this episode did stray away from the original source material. So, that's interesting. That's very interesting how we're going away from the actual light novel and moving into anime original territory. Now, I've seen both sides of this. I've seen the bad side of anime original routes, and I've seen the good side. And I'm not saying that whatever's gonna happen is gonna be bad. I'm not gonna say whatever's gonna happen is gonna be good either. However, it could be a tad bit worrisome, because everybody that's been watching Yojo Senki these past couple episodes, or since the entirety of the series began, they've been watching it because, you know, it's falling off the original light novel source, which is very good material, and has a very interesting main character, Tanya. And now that it's going into the anime original route, I understand why it could be a little bit worrisome for many, because it's going to be different, it's not going to be following the original writer's, you know, point of view or what they wanted with this series, so we'll see where it goes. For now, I'm not going to really care much about it, because we'll just have to see. The only thing I know of at this time that apparently was changed or whatever is apparently the soldier at the end of the episode, from what I have heard. Now, like I said, don't quote me on this, this is just what I've heard from the light novel readers, because I personally haven't read the material or anything, but apparently the soldier at the end of the episode that survived or whatever, apparently he wasn't supposed to be alive or something. That's what I heard. Now, like I said, I don't know, don't quote me on that, but that's what I've heard from the light novel readers. Now anyways, besides that, I feel like this episode overall was probably one of my personal favorite episodes of Yojo Senki. Now I've been saying that a lot because honestly this series is getting better and better by the episode and I feel like this episode really set up for a lot of good things even if it was anime original. I do like the direction of this episode which I will get into but I love what the episode's main theme was about. It was to show how a lot of politicians or people in war manipulate laws to get what they want, what they want to accomplish and that's kind of what happened in this episode. So the main theme of it is that Tanya and her entire squad is tasked with taking back this city that is rebelling. Now, as we know with last week's episode, they managed to conquer the entirety of the Republic, pretty much. They conquered that entire state or the country, and they had it. They had the railway and all that. And because of this, they pretty much had everything under the control, but obviously when you take over a country, there's going to be civilians that are not going to like that, and they're going to rise up and want to stand against you. And in that case, that's exactly what happened this episode. An entire town or city turned against the Empire and wanted to, you know, just continuously rebel. And because they were civilians, obviously the Empire couldn't attack them because they'd be kind of fucked up. And according to their laws, they can't really attack civilians or, you know, bomb a city with civilians in it. So because because of this, it made the episode show that the people in war are willing to manipulate their laws to get what they want. In this case, they were willing to do an artillery bombing on an entire city that had innocent civilians inside of it. Now, a lot of the civilians honestly were not that innocent. They were rising up and fighting against the Empire, which makes sense though. You gotta remember, if your entire country was taken against, you know, your will, and all of a sudden you're under a new ruler and you didn't ask for this new ruler, obviously you might want to stand up and rise against the person, even if you are an innocent civilian, you want to stand up, you're like, I'm not dealing with this, and that's kind of what they were doing, and so they were forced in that situation thanks to the Empire conquering land, and what led to this is that eventually, if they continue to fight and draw out the battle, it was just going to be bad for the Empire, it was going to, you know, just use a lot of resources, they were not going to be able to take the land in time, and it would just be very bad overall in the entirety of the war that's going on right now, the World War. So, because of this, a new law was passed to where you have to go in, you have to say your declaration of war like that, you get the fuck out of the city, because if you're not out of the city in a certain amount of time, we're assuming all of you are people that we need to kill. You're all people that are soldiers. And so even if you're a civilian, you will be targeted. It does not matter. So it's kind of like don't get the fuck out, you're gonna die, and because that's kind of what they were trying to say, and so they gave the civilians enough warning, if they really did want to leave, they could have gotten the hell out of there, and they wouldn't have been killed, but if you stay there, they're going to assume you want to fight, and you're going to die, you're considered a soldier at this time, even if you're a child, or anything like that, a woman or child, or whatever, they will fucking kill you on sight, 
And that's what led to the very controversial theme of this episode, because in war, stuff like this does tend to happen, and it can be something very fucked up, and it shows that how the military manipulates laws to be able to get something done to further their agenda, and that's what happened in this episode. When you see Tanya and her soldiers just wiping out people, they're taking down the city, and then Tanya tells one of her soldiers to kill this person, kill the people over there, and you just see an innocent child and all that, the reason why is because that needs to be done, because they need to do that and follow the laws that they now have set to be able to take over the city, because overall, more lives are going to be lost if this battle continues on both sides, so it's best just to end it right then and there, which, like I said, it's very controversial, but it's really interesting the way Yojo Senki brings something like this up. Now, the main part about this episode, which really threw me for a loop, was that I thought Tanya honestly felt a little bit bad about the theme or what the main part of this episode was about. For instance, her taking it down and killing civilians, you know, telling them that they need to surrender. It seemed like she felt something overall, and also her soldiers as well. A lot of her soldiers felt a lot, but I thought Tanya felt something because of the way she was reacting throughout this episode. But then it's revealed at the end that Tanya is the one that presented this law in the first place, presented the plans to take over a city, and I'm like, oh my god, like, Tanya straight up, like, I thought she was, you know, feeling a little bit sad or guilt, but no, apparently everything that happened in this episode is thanks to Tanya's planning in the past and just giving a paper to the military like, hey, maybe you can do something like this to be able to take over a city and it won't be against the law. It's kind of like bending the law a little bit just to get what you want, and that's what happened, so... Yeah, the episode was a very dark episode because you see a lot of innocent people just getting gunned down and blown up with artillery fire. And when you just have those orders sent, when you see the dude on the cannon and all that, and he's like, just fire right now, and you just see him look at the dude, and you see the artillery shells come in and hit the buildings, you know a lot of people are going to die. A lot, a lot, a lot of children and all that are going to die because of this. And it's thanks to Tanya presenting this plan in the first place that managed to make this happen at all. So yeah. Tanya, straight up evil. I mean, it's kind of, I guess, obvious when you think about what she's done so far, but also because of the name, you know, Saga of, you know, Tanya the Evil or whatever. So, makes sense. It's just like, damn, it, it was a really brutal episode of Yojo Senki, which I really enjoyed. I, I like seeing this, and I'm glad that the series doesn't shy away from these type of themes. It's something, like I said, that many might not like because it's controversial, but I'm glad the series doesn't try to just back off this and actually tries to tackle these themes with a mature way about it. So, besides that, let's talk about the ending theme of this episode. So, the soldier that apparently died... He's alive, and it seems like Being X is helping him. Now, as I already said earlier on this video, apparently this dude was supposedly supposed to be dead, or he's supposed to be dead as fuck, or like I said, I haven't read the source material, so I don't know, but apparently he's supposed to be dead. So with him coming back, it means that it's deviated, that this man shouldn't be manipulated. Now, however, I don't think this, you know, strain from the light novel is necessarily a bad thing at this time, because we gotta remember that this is a series that probably will never have a conclusion overall if it tries to wait for the light novel. Because the reason why is, is because usually when an anime follows a light novel, obviously they can never really conclude it without many, many years passing. Because writing light novels can take a long time. That's what happened to ReZero. That's why I'm sad because we'll probably never get, you know, a season 2 of ReZero for probably many years from now. Because of how long it's going to take for the light novels to come out. So because of this, I feel like it's actually a necessary thing sometimes to do an anime original conclusion conclusion to give closure to the watchers of the anime series. It probably won't be the best ending of all time, and it probably won't stand up to the light novel's ending when it eventually comes out, but it's some form of closure which I do respect, because there's a lot of series I watched over the years to where, you know, it had a fantastic first season, but it never got a conclusion. It really upset me. I had always wanted to see, like, a conclusion in anime form or some form of closure, but it never happened, and so I really do hope that Yojo Senki gets some good closure with the remaining episodes it has left. I think it only has like four episodes left. Now, if they do go the anime original route, that means that if they want to go even further, they could possibly make a season two completely anime original, but that's a whole new can of worms they're opening up if they do that type of stuff. So we'll just see where it goes from here. Overall, though, I don't think it's a bad thing adding this character and allowing him to be alive, because even if they go anime original for this only, 
I don't feel like it will ruin the plot of the series because this dude being live, it's just like a bump in the road for Tanya to overcome like this antagonist, this person that's against her. And so overcoming this person is something that would eventually probably happen in the original series as well, the light novel, because you're gonna have people that stand up against Tanya and want to put her down. Being X is obviously gonna send a lot of people towards her. So I don't feel like this dude being incorporated and being added in and still being live is really gonna change the grand scheme of things of the series. So I don't think it's gonna be that bad of a change. So like I said, we'll see where it goes. I am curious to see if it will be good or not. But I have hope that, you know, Yojo Senki will end on a very good note. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And I love you all so much. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.